Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. Toyota, Honda, Nissan, and Subaru. Why do Japanese automakers continue to use CVTs? This video explains the unique mechanism of CVTs, their strengths and weaknesses, and why they are still in use. A CVT, continuously variable transmission, enables seamless gear ratio changes without the use of meshing gears. Other types of transmissions, including manual transmissions, change gear combinations to either reduce or increase the engine's output speed before transmitting it to the wheels. This animation is an example of a simple two-speed manual transmission. First gear has a ratio of 0.75 and second gear has a ratio of 1.5. Since the transmission is currently in first gear, the output shaft rotates at three quarters of the engine speed. When shifting into second gear, the output shaft rotates at 1.5 times the engine speed. Although the structure varies significantly, all transmissions except CVT shift gears based on this principle. Manual transmissions mainly use six gears. Step type automatic transmissions typically have six to ten gears. And DCTs commonly use 6 to 8 gears. CVTs use two sets of pulleys and a belt. In low gear, the radius of the input pulley decreases, while the radius of the output pulley increases. In high gear, the radius of the input pulley increases, while the radius of the output pulley decreases. CVTs change speed by continuously varying the pulley radius. However, since the radius of the pulley cannot actually be changed, the effective pulley diameter, where the pulley and belt make contact, is adjusted by varying the pulley width. The input side pulley is called the primary pulley, and the output side pulley is called the secondary pulley. The distance from the contact point between the belt and the pulley, to the center of the pulley, is called the effective pulley diameter while the distance between the opposing pulleys is called the pulley width. Since the pulley has a conical shape, changing the pulley width causes the belt to move, which in turn changes the effective pulley radius. Let's take a look at how the shifting works. When the primary pulley width is large and its effective diameter is small, the secondary pulley is reduced in speed relative to the primary pulley. Narrowing the primary pulley width increases its effective radius, causing the secondary pulley speed to increase. Conversely, widening the primary pulley width decreases its effective radius, causing the secondary pulley speed to decrease. The pulley width is controlled by two circuits of CVT fluid pressure. The CVT fluid pressure is generated by the CVT fluid pump. The CVT fluid pressure for clamping the belt is called line pressure, while the pressure for adjusting the pulley width is called pulley ratio control pressure. The common pulleys we imagine, such as those used in wells and cranes, transmit force in the direction in which the rope or wire is pulled. However, CVT pulleys transmit force by pushing the belt. By applying line pressure to the back of the pulley, the two pulleys firmly clamp the belt, generating friction between the sides of the belt and the cone surfaces of the pulleys. At the primary pulley, friction drives the belt toward the secondary pulley. At the secondary pulley, friction transfers the belt's driving force to the pulley. The CVT fluid pressure is controlled by the CVT control unit which calculates the optimal gear ratio based on driving conditions such as vehicle speed, engine speed, and accelerator pedal input. It then adjusts the pulley ratio control pressure by regulating the solenoid. During upshift, the control unit turns on the upshift solenoid. The fluid passage to the upshift valve opens, and the line pressure causes the valve to open. The pulley ratio control pressure is applied to the back of the primary pulley, reducing its width. Once the upshift is complete, the up solenoid is turned off and the upshift valve is closed. The pulley ratio control pressure and pulley width are maintained. 
During downshift, the control unit turns on the downshift solenoid. The fluid passage to the downshift valve opens, and the line pressure causes the valve to open. Since the downshift valve opens the pulley ratio control pressure circuit, the fluid pressure decreases and the primary pulley width increases. Once downshift is complete, the downshift solenoid is turned off to maintain the pulley ratio control pressure and pulley width. When waiting at a traffic light, for example, the engine continues to idle while the tires must remain stationary. For this reason, a torque converter is installed between the primary pulley and the engine, serving as a launch device. The principle of the torque converter can be compared to two facing electric fans, where rotating one causes the airflow to transfer motion to the other, making it spin as well. However, instead of air, the torque converter uses CVT fluid as the medium for power transmission. This channel also offers a video explaining the details of the torque converter. If you're interested, be sure to check it out. The link is available in the description. Next to the torque converter, a CVT fluid pump is installed to generate line pressure and pulley ratio control pressure. Even when the pulleys stop, such as when waiting at a traffic light, hydraulic pressure must be maintained. Therefore, the oil pump is driven from the input side rather than the output side of the torque converter. A double pinion planetary gear set is installed between the transmission and the torque converter to switch between forward and reverse. It consists of three elements a sun gear, a planetary carrier, and an internal gear. During forward movement, the hydraulic multiplate clutch locks the sun gear and planetary carrier, allowing the engine's rotation to be transmitted directly to the output. During reverse movement, the hydraulic multiplate clutch locks the internal gear to the transmission case, causing the output rotation to reverse. This channel also offers a video explaining the details of planetary gear sets. If you're interested, be sure to check it out. The link is available in the description. The output from the secondary pulley is transmitted to the differential gear through a set of reduction gears. We will consider three strengths of CVTs. Smooth acceleration without shift shocks. As explained earlier, CVTs shift without using gears, resulting in absolutely no shift shock. The driver and passengers do not experience back and forth movement, ensuring a smooth and comfortable drive. Compact in size. Simple structure with fewer components. For example, a 10 speed stepped automatic transmission requires four sets of planetary gears, six sets of hydraulic multiplate clutches, and a hydraulic circuit to control them. A CVT only requires two sets of pulleys, a belt, a forward reverse switching clutch, and a much simpler hydraulic circuit. Maintaining the most efficient engine speed. This graph is a performance curve chart of a certain engine. How does this engine accelerate when paired with a stepped automatic transmission? Pay attention to the fuel consumption rate. Each time the transmission shifts, the engine speed fluctuates significantly. Next, how does it accelerate when paired with a CVT? The engine speed remains constant, while the vehicle speed changes solely through the function of the CVT. CVTs can change the vehicle speed, while maintaining the engine in its most efficient speed range. In conditions with frequent acceleration and deceleration, such as city driving, CVTs offer excellent fuel efficiency for the reasons mentioned above. Next, we will consider three weaknesses of CVTs. Rubber band effort is the discomfort that the driver experiences during acceleration. Please observe the acceleration again, paying attention to the vehicle speed and engine speed. With this stepped automatic transmission, vehicle speed and engine speed are proportional. In other words, the acceleration, the accelerator pedal pressure, and the engine sound are synchronized. With the CVT, these elements are not synchronized, which causes the discomfort. 
Many drivers dislike this. The gear ratio coverage is the difference between the reduction ratios of the low gear and the top gear. A wider gear ratio coverage allows for quicker acceleration from a stop and quieter and more fuel-efficient driving on highways. In CVTs, the gear ratio coverage is more limited than in other transmissions due to factors, such as restrictions on pulley size imposed by packaging constraints, and the metal belt's inability to bend around small radius. Compared to the 10.15 gear ratio coverage of Honda's 10-speed AT and the 9.82 of Chrysler's 9-speed AT, Subaru CVT is limited to 8.10. There are two reasons for the low efficiency of CVTs. The gears used in other transmissions generally have a transmission efficiency of around 99%, while the belt and pulleys in CVTs achieve just over 90% even under the most efficient conditions. The hydraulic pressure required to generate friction between the belt and pulleys is typically around 5 MPa which is significantly higher than the approximately 2 MPa required to actuate the clutch in a stepped AT. As a result, the losses incurred by the CVT fluid pump contribute to reduce fuel efficiency. To overcome these weaknesses, CVTs have evolved. For drivers who dislike the rubber band effort, some models feature a simulated shift mode. By operating the paddle levers on the back of the steering wheel, drivers can shift up and down in steps, similar to a manual transmission. Toyota offers CVTs with a 10-speed simulated step function, Subaru with an 8-speed, and Honda with a 7-speed. To improve the rubber band effort and expand the gear ratio coverage, Toyota has adopted a CVT with an additional launch gear. Nissan adopted a two-speed planetary gear auxiliary transmission to expand the gear ratio coverage. In other words, this transmission consists of a two-speed automatic and a CVT. One of the reasons Subaru uses a chain instead of a metal belt is to expand the gear ratio coverage. Because a chain can bend at a smaller radius than a metal belt, it allows for a higher reduction ratio in low gear and a higher increase ratio in high gear. To reduce the loss in the CVT fluid pump, there are models with a variable line pressure for clamping the belt. A line pressure control valve is provided to reduce pump loss with a low line pressure, at low speeds or under low load. And the line pressure is only increased at high speeds or under high load, to prevent belt slip. Let's go back to the question at the beginning of this video. Why do Japanese automakers continue to use CVTs? In the 1990s and 2000s, when they all began adopting CVTs, there were advantages to CVTs over stepped automatic transmissions. However, today, stepped automatic transmissions have evolved significantly, and there are no longer any clear advantages of CVTs over them, except for cost. CVTs, that were well matched with low torque naturally aspirated engines, has lost its advantage with the arrival of downsized turbo engines with higher torque. Improving the rubber band effort is nothing more than a trade-off for excellent fuel efficiency. The more the CVT is improved, the less reason there is for it to remain a CVT. Then, why do Japanese automakers continue to use them? There is no doubt that the share of hybrid vehicles will continue to increase until the next wave of battery EVs arrives. For Japanese automakers with unique hybrid systems that do not require a transmission, there will be no increase in transmission demand. There is no incentive to develop new types of transmissions for a shrinking demand. So, they have no choice but to continue using CVTs in a limited capacity from now on. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.